Uh, but I, if you look last year, Tampa Bay Rays won the American League East, and they were 18-1 and one against the Orioles. The Orioles stink. All right? The year before, the Red Sox, I believe, won the um, American League East, and they were 17-2. and two. Now, last year, the Yankees ended up being tied with the Red Sox because the Red Sox beat up on the uh, the Baltimore Orioles, and the Yankees were 11-8. and eight. Not good enough. No. So if they beat up on the Orioles last year the way they should, they would have been competing with the Rays for first place. And even if they didn't compete with the Rays, you know what else? That one game playoff the Yankees played against the Red Sox would have been at Yankee Stadium and not at Fenway Park. So to get slapped around by a terrible team, you can't do it. But so as I'm driving home in the car yesterday um, after the K-Rod broadcast, I'm scrolling through Yankee Twitter. I mean, people. I love you, but you got to relax. Fire Aaron Boone. This team stinks. I can't take it anymore. You know the last time they scored this few runs uh, for the first 10 games? 1977. Oh, 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 they won a championship that year. You're all being fools. Oh, it's the same thing as last year. It's 10 games. Do you really oh. believe they're going to be this bad for, for the 162-game season? Now, should they be better than 5-5? Five and five? Of course they should be better than 5-5. Five and five. But they beat the Red Sox 2 out of 3. And, and on our pregame meeting, Don said, Red Sox aren't running away. They just lost to the Twins on Patriots Day. They, they beat a Blue Jay team who I think is better than them, 2 out of 4. So they split four games. And then they went into Baltimore and they laid a big fat egg. There was one inning that they essentially scored in that series. One. And that's when they won on Saturday. They scored one run in 11 innings on Friday. Disgraceful. They scored zero runs in nine innings yesterday. Disgraceful. But to go overboard, that Aaron Boone should be fired, that this team stinks. I mean, really, what? do you even enjoy being fans? Do you enjoy being a fan? Or you just want to be miserable? Because to sit back and, and say this is the end of the world, that they're 5-5 five and five after 10 games, come on, control yourselves. Every, every single one of you. And if you want to call me Yankee boy, bring it on. I'm not defending them. I just said losing to the Orioles is disgraceful. They should be embarrassed. But it happens. You can't give up on the team after 10 games. Come on. Well, you got to you got to take a couple of things into account here. Number one, they weren't thrilled with the team going in. Right. All right. So this is kind of just backing up everything that they felt on what they thought was a failed offseason. And they weren't a big fan of Boone going into this year either so of course they're going to kill him so this is not a surprise to me michael but my issue with you and your take is well then let's just not talk baseball until may okay or, or the all-star break or to the playoffs because this is what we do baseball's big in this town and if the yankees were 10 and 0 we'd be telling everybody how great boone is and how great everybody's playing and what a tremendous start so when you're five and five and you just lost two out of three to the orioles in which you scored a collective five runs in the series Fans are going to react, and rightly so. This is this is too familiar, Michael. This is way too familiar. We could have been playing this, you know, two years ago, three years ago. Slow start, can't beat the Orioles for whatever reason, and then we end up looking at a team going into the playoffs as a wild card instead of a division champion. Now, nobody's running away with this division at all. I mean, the Yankees haven't buried themselves by any stretch. But I think what's ticking Yankee fans off is is the same old song and dance. It doesn't seem to change. And these games that they lost this weekend might be the reason why they're playing in a wild card series instead of winning the division. And you can't – I know it's early, but they still count. And to be 500 after 10 games and losing to that's, – that's Yankee South, that building. I mean, right, that's Yankee Stadium South. They, half the people in the building are Yankee fans. They own the Orioles. They own Camden Yards. And five runs? Terrible. L listen, Don, I'm all for criticizing them for the series. But to go overboard on it, I mean, there's a, there's a threat about firing Aaron Boone. First of all, he just signed a three-year extension with an option. He's not going anywhere, so save your breath and save your characters on Twitter. That's just asinine. Fire Aaron Boone. I, I do think that they're well within their rights, though, to, to be fed up with sort of the style of play that the Yankees have chosen to rely on. I mean, Cortez's performance yesterday was awesome. 
Yep. It's just a, a completely wasted performance. And I, I see the frustration there because yeah. even if it turns around for a little while, like I don't think the average fan thinks this will continue all season. The problem is even when it turns around, you're waiting for this to happen again because it's always going to be possible when you play the style of baseball. Well, there's a couple of things that I think are legitimate complaints, Peter. Okay. So I'll, I'll give those. The, the constant... The constant resting of a player that should be in there every day is a joke. And I asked Aaron Boone on Saturday, I said, really? Did you ever think it was Jackie Robinson Day on Friday that you shouldn't be resting um, Aaron Judge? He goes, you know, I did think about it, but, you know, that was our plan to rest him on this day. A plan? Why are you planning to rest people? Why don't you rest them when they're tired? And he said, listen, that's why we, that's why he stayed healthy last year. He stayed healthy last year because we were able to get him days off when we thought he needed him. He said, I'm not going to play people 10 games in a row. 10 games in a row? They can't play 10 games in a row? What does oh. this game come to? Wait, he, he he mentioned that there in the interview, and then he just said it to you. The 10 game, they didn't even get to 10 games in a row on Friday. Right, that was only seven games in a row before and guess Friday. what? An off day. So he, 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 they got an off day. So even if he played 10 games in a row, they got an off day. Detroit's not any great shakes, so you could arrest them. I, I, I don't. And the thing that frustrates everybody, Michael, is all this analytic. This is the way to win, and they're not winning. It's not necessarily working. The last and time they, they won a championship was when they went out and they 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 spent the extra money, brought to Sherry. Now I think analytics were in the game, you know, 15 years ago. But was it to this extent? Like since they've reinvented the wheel with the way the game is supposed to be played, has it worked? Well, I mean, they, you could say that they they made the playoffs and, and they probably exceeded uh, what they were supposed to do. But I, I hear what you're saying. I believe in the analytics. I am so dead set against the resting by schedule. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yesterday, they rested Anthony Rizzo. Why? Well, he's been hit four times, a little banged up. Play through it. And also, I, I've got to blame Aaron Judge a little bit, too. You walk into Boone's office and you say, I am playing on Friday. Uh, you really think that Aaron Boone's going to say, no, you're not? If, if, if he comes in and screams, I'm playing, he's playing. And I've said this from the beginning, everybody. You can believe it or not. And I am not shy about it. I said it to Boone. Don and Peter heard Boone. Said, thought I was an idiot. Nine regular players into eight spots is a recipe for disaster. Yesterday, no Gallo, no Rizzo. Why? Because Sandy, oh, no, not Sandy Koufax. Bruce Zimmerman was on the mound, a left-hander? Right. Come on. Come on with the resting. And at some point, because I don't overreact after 10 games. I've seen too much baseball in 36 years. I don't overreact. You want to see a lost player? Labor Torres is a lost player. Mm-hmm. Right. The Yankees are better with with DJ LeMayu at second base. But are you really going to bench Glaber Torres out the 10 games? They got to keep a close eye on that. This is a guy that owned the Orioles more than Peter Angelos does. And he was 0 for, uh, I believe, 12 in the series. 0 for 12. And he tried to bunt. A guy who had eight home runs one year at Camden Yards tried to bunt in a nothing nothing game. I, I, I don't get the resting. I don't get the constant shuffling. And really, play the players until they get hurt. Even Don brought this up on Friday. Do we know if Clayton Kershaw would have gotten hurt? It, it's all a guessing game. You're, you're going with the odds. You know, if we really push these guys, push these guys, eventually they'll break. But you don't even know. I'm sorry, but playing a guy seven, eight games in a row, Michael, is not is not pushing them. And if you think playing them seven or ten games in a row is going to break them, then you get the wrong players. You get the wrong players. They're not built the right way. They're not worked out enough. They're not not in good enough shape. If you think that that's going to break them after ten games. Hey, it wasn't that long ago that Cal Ripken Jr. played every single game for however many years. And I've, I've told this to Aaron right to his face. Why was it that the Atlanta Braves, like six of their players last year, played 155 games? It can be done. Yes, it can be done in the 21st century. They're so nervous about resting people. And it bites you. You're taking out important bats. You lose a game. You score one run. 
one run on, on Friday against the Orioles without Aaron Judge. You got one pinch hit at bat for him in extra innings, and he grounded out to third. So you don't get the full efficacy of Aaron Judge. Why? Because he needed to rest after seven games in a row. At some point, man, it, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that's organizational. That's what they're Medical staff, they all get together. This guy, that's not Boone. That's all organizational. Now, he's the one who obviously makes the final decision, but it's coming from up high. This is what our support people say to keep our guys healthy. You get the wrong guys then. You get the wrong guys. If, if they can't play 155 games but, without a, a terrible injury, like a knee injury, like LeCastro had last year, you get the wrong guys. Get better guys. Get more athletic and, guys. And again, we'll talk to Aaron on Thursday. You know, but you had a chance to speak to him on on um, on Saturday mm-hmm. about why Judge didn't play on Jackie Robinson Day, and he said, "Oh, he thought about it, but these were worked out ahead of time." I'm sorry, we knew forever what day Jackie Robinson Day was. So if you thought about it, Aaron, put him in the lineup, or is this so organizational that you really didn't have a say? So don't don't jerk me around with the whole I thought about it. Well, if you thought about it, you're a baseball guy, third generation baseball guy. If anybody understands the significance of Jackie Robinson Day, it should be Aaron Boone. So if he thought about it, then you put him in the lineup. Am I, am I wrong to say that? I'll, I'll ask him on Thursday. If you thought about it, put him in the lineup. There shouldn't even be a thought. One of the great African-American players in Major League Baseball on, on, the, on the holiest of days in baseball in this country. 75th anniversary. Play him. If you thought about it, then you're wrong for not playing him. Mm. Or is it something above you that said, no, this is, sorry. I, I think it's probably a combo of he's so used to the pressure of it, it, it being built in that it didn't register with him that he really should have pushed back on this one. That's what I'm guessing. But you, the thing that bothers me more, I think it's insulting. And, and you know, I was talking to Maven, and Maven talked to people around baseball. And a lot of the African-American players that he spoke to said they cannot believe that Aaron Judge was not in the game. They cannot believe that he was not in the starting lineup. They were offended by it. Hmm. So that's what the the buzz is around Major League Baseball. And – but the thing that got me more than that – we spoke about it on Friday. It was ridiculous he wasn't playing. There's a plan that you have to rest Aaron Judge after seven games and you can't deviate off that plan? Really? That's scary stuff. Scary. No, it's because how do you plan it ahead of time when you have no idea how that player is going to be playing or feel at that time or how the team is going to be playing? It it was easy for all of us. Heck, I was wrong. I thought they were going to score 25, not six runs over the weekend. But you know what? By the time you got to to that series, you weren't playing great. And after what happened on Friday – and even, Michael, I'm wondering if they didn't have that rain delay, were they going to get shut out again on Saturday? Yeah, they woke up after the rain or the you know, hail delay. So, <laughs> so I, I just I feel like, you know, you, you can look ahead and say, oh, we're going to be playing the Orioles and they stink and we own them. And But it, if you live in the now and you see, all right, what what's going on around our team right now, maybe – Maybe we can't afford to be resting these players. And you see the way Torres is playing. you got nine guys for eight spots. Michael, the way Torres is playing, it really should be eight for eight. That's the guy that should be sitting until he figures it out. Why am I bending over backwards, giving people days off so he could play? And then you, know, you should never rest D.J. LeMayu. Never. He's back to the player he was the first two years. You never rest him. But everybody has to get a rest. Because you got nine regulars for eight spots. It doesn't fit. It's, it's square peg, round hole. You can't do it. You need more Marwin Gonzalez's. Again, you know, one of the listeners just said, well, why don't you talk like this to Boone to his face? What did we do on Thursday? We burnt this very stuff up. Yeah, let's not play that game, people, okay? Wrong show. I mean, the, the game is on, uh, everything that we say is on, yes, it's being monitored, and we do say it to him. But we also get into a back and forth, and he gives his response. I mean, it, he's not hemming and hawing. He's not like, I don't, I don't know. No, he gives he you their reason. It. It's it's all just, here's what it comes down to, everybody. It's an uh, it's two sides that think about things fundamentally different. 
All right? It's not trying to expose the ignorant. It's they believe something different than we believe. This is how we they should be want very to play open baseball. to this. This is the way that's going on in this country. It's very difficult sometimes to be able to change the mind of somebody who believes that they're 100% in the right. We're screaming about it. We're taking phone calls about it. The Yankees are laughing at us because they think this is the right way to do it. So how are you supposed to change hearts and minds? These are diamond notes we're talking to or about. It's brought to you by Nissan. Uh, the number is one 